Welcome back everyone. Live music, art installations, activities for children and multiple altars will be on display at the Pearl tomorrow in celebration of Dia de los Muertos. And today, artist Regina Moya along with senior brand manager at the Pearl, Claudia Gonzalez, are here to tell us more about this event. Welcome ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Thanks for being with us. So tell me a little bit about the celebration of Dia de los Muertos at the Pearl. Well, San Antonio has really just become a leader in the celebration of Dia de los Muertos in the United States and at Pearl we're excited Excited to be a part of that celebration. We have partnered with the Mexican consulate and local artists to concept and build altars and immersive art experiences at Pearl. Those will be on display and able to experience through November 7th. Okay. And tomorrow we've got our event, um, which is Wednesday, November 2nd from 5 to 9. Mm -hmm. And we will have um, face painting, we'll of course have the altars and the immersive art experiences, we'll have puppets, we'll have live music children's activities as well so it will be a really uh, good celebration for a very important uh, sacred holiday. Yes, like we were showing them in the beginning how to build the altar, the significance behind it. And Regina, you are involved in this because you were talking about artists you guys have collaborated with mm -hmm. and you are one of those artists and one of your altares, ofranas, are on display there as well? Yes, I have uh, an altar there and I'm honoring, I chose to honor Emma Tenayuca. Mm -hmm. She was uh, an American uh, labor leader and she fought for the rights of Mexican workers in the 1930s. So I chose to honor her. How important that must be for you as well, especially you are from Mexico City. I'm from Mexico City. So yes. beautiful that you're able to represent your heritage that way. But one of the things you do is I saw you um, the one year with when you did it with Chef Johnny, right? The big butterfly skull that you made. Yes. <laughs> in relation to her beautiful book she's written as well. Um, but we're going to learn how to kind of, I can't be Regina, but Claudia, we, I can either. We can try. So you were saying this is a good alternative for people who cannot find sugar skulls, yeah, right? Yeah, so what I'm going to uh, teach you how to do today are the uh, traditional calaveritas. Okay. And in Mexico, they're usually done with uh, sugar, so that's why they're sugar skulls chocolate or amaranth but today we're going to do them with foam okay. you can get these in any craft store and what i did is i kind of uh primed them a little bit first with white paint okay. and then the easiest way to go because you can do anything with them you could put acrylic you can uh, paste feathers or flowers or anything that glitters but today since we don't have much time i'm going to be showing you the easiest way okay. so what i do is i get um permanent markers and First, I start to trace them with a pencil. Now, oh. get a pencil that's kind of dull, like not very pointy. Okay. So you can all get your uh, pencils also. Oh, and just okay. start tracing what is traditional, okay. is tracing mostly flowers and vines, because we always want to have live elements in representation of that, you know, death is also part of life. So I usually do a flower in the forehead, and just do whatever you want. Just uh, start like tracing little vines. You know, it's like the doodling I used to do as a kid. Yeah. Is, yeah. is what I would do. Always vines and flowers, maybe subconsciously. Vines. I was in the spirit. Yeah, exactly. You can do sometimes what uh, is traditional is to do hearts also. Yes. Anything that's alive. So even the little uh, tracing on the calaveritas uh -huh. are very important. And sometimes people put names over them and they can oh. be the names of the, the ones that, ha that have passed or even names of the members of your family. Oh, so I once like you uh, traced your calaverita with everything you want, we're gonna start um, coloring it with whatever colors we want. Okay. So you can just start coloring the petals and the vines. That's the, the hearts, blue. yeah, whatever you want. Okay, but you said mine is the Talavera colors. Yeah, so yours, Roma, I got uh, yours a special one because in Mexico, especially in the region of Puebla, we have the Talavera Poblana, and usually it's always blue. Oh. So, yes, yeah, so c the colors are white and blue, so if you find a Calavera or a Catrina that is only white and blue, it's, it's uh, in honoring the Mexican Talavera Poblana. So beautiful. We have on screen all the info of how people can come out and celebrate tomorrow, ladies. I'm so grateful that you could be here, Regina, Claudia. Thank it's going to be so a beautiful much. celebration Thank tomorrow. Yes, Stay with is. us, y'all. We'll be back in a few minutes.